Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. And this one's a little bit special because we're dabbling in a different scale and we're going coastal. Yes, I'm messing around in 1300 scale and I'm messing with some coastal features. I get a lot of requests for small scale stuff, but doing large builds at small scale is a lot of work. So these coastal features will allow me to do some small scale stuff for you. At the same time, you guys who've been following the channel know I'm doing a lot of water stuff this year and so it's an opportunity to show you some water techniques as well. Now above all we're going to be making sandbars and simple rock clusters for small scale naval war games and the whole idea is in this video what I really want to cover and this is a core techniques video for other let's makes that are going to come just after this. I want to cover how to make uh, long, thin, slim bits without them warping, which is a common problem with naval terrain. I want to cover a couple of different ways of doing water effects for small scale as well. So what we're making is pretty simple, but the important thing is about the techniques. And with that in mind, let's get cracked on with that, what we start with, the base. Now, if you look down here, what I've got is, I've got some sheets of plastic hard. Okay, now this is styrene sheets. You can buy them from Plastro to Evergreen and there's various other places that do them. You need to look, if you're doing small scale stuff, you need to look at a minimum of one millimeter thick. Okay, uh, anything thinner and they're too flimsy. So when you store them or when you put them down and stack, the edges bend, that your effects will crack off. So you have problems with any thinner. So you need to go for one mil. Now I've got one mil in white and I've got one mil in black as well. Color doesn't matter, but I'm gonna be using black mainly in this video simply because it shows up better on the camera. There is no difference practical wise. So if you've only got white, go with white. Now on top of that, before we dive into this, just a quick one if you can't get these sheets. What you can get is you can get these. Now these are textured plastic card. These are from a company called Will Scenics and you can turn them over and you can use them for basing for small scale stuff. Slightly expensive, not the best way of doing it, but it's an option for you if you can't get the plastic card. So first thing that we need to do and I need to do is cut up some bases for my plastic card. So for that, all I'm gonna be doing is using a simple knife and then once I've cut them up, yeah, we'll be giving them a sand with some sandpaper. So let me get my bases cut out and we'll come back once they are. Now remember, as you cut these out, it's far better to work with multiple shallow cuts than it is trying to force it with a single cut. And remember, you're using blades, so watch your fingers. When it comes to the sanding, use a medium grit paper, smooth off your cuts, then bevel your edges just a little before rubbing the sandpaper over the top surface. This is to create basically a, a grooves that our filler and that sort of stuff can key into and stick to better. So our bases are cut out and they're sanded and they're looking rather good. Now, if you do have any little bits that warp up a little from cutting them out and that sort of stuff, you can just give them a bend back at this stage. It's not a problem. They'll sit perfectly flat. Okay, as long as you don't bend them excessively when you're cutting them out, you know what I mean? Right, moving on, we're gonna start off with the most simplest of sandbanks. And to do that, we're gonna be using milliput. Okay, now the benefit of milliput, milliput is a two-part epoxy putty. Okay, a hardener and an activator and a putty, and basically they go hard when you mix them together. But the benefit of milliput is it doesn't shrink as it cures and it dries and it goes hard, which means it won't warp. So it's perfect perfect for sandbanks. So my next job is I'm going to grab my milliput, I'm going to mix it up, yeah, and then we're going to apply it onto a couple of the smaller bases. Because of the volume of milliput you need to do this, okay, it's not really financially viable for large pieces. We're going to use something else for that, but for the small ones, we'll crack on with some milliput. So let's get stuck in. When it comes to putting the milliput onto our actual bases, force it onto the center and spread it out from the center. Remember, we're working in one 300th scale, so one millimeter is a foot. So you only actually need a rise of two or three millimeters to make your sandbar. 
spread it out from the center and, and when you get a little bit of water on your hands to smooth it off, pay particular attention to the edges, the transition of where the milliput meets the base because that's where you're gonna need it the smoothest. And once what you've done all your messing about with your milliput, okay, you're left with two things like this. Now, really simple. Now, that is essentially all the terrain making side of making it. But if I raise it up, you can see how low profile they are. Okay. Now, we're going to put those to the side for a second because they're going to need 24 hours to fully cure before we can come back and start painting them up and doing all our funky stuff with them. So, we'll put these to the side and it's time to move on to something a little bit different. We're going to work with some rocks. Now, I've got a base here. Okay, and I've got some rocks here. Okay, this is my little box of rocks. I have a box of rocks. Yeah, and basically, once again, because it's a small scale, we don't need particularly big rocks. But I'm gonna find a couple of nice rocks that I can use to just place down on this base, okay? When they're placed down, I'm gonna glue them down with a bit of watch glue a bit of hot glue and then I'm going to fill the gaps with a little bit of filler. Okay now the reason that I'm doing these rocks and doing them like this I could carve them out of foam I'm saving that for a later tutorial. I want the rocks so I can show you more dramatic wave effects against a rock face. So basically the sort of splash waves you don't get with the sandbars. So that's why we're doing this one okay. So basically all I've got to do is I've got to get some rocks, glue them down with some hot glue and then fill the gaps with some filler. And I'll bring them back when they're done, guys. Now, I'm using hot glue to glue the rocks down, but you can use other adhesives. Hot glue is just quicker and easier and lets me move on. When it comes to filling in the gaps, I'm just using my standard filler. First, smooth it into every gap you can, especially the underhangs. Then come along with a cloth, give it a bit of a wipe or remove the excess, and at the same time, do a bit of a stippling action with the cloth. That'll create a little bit of a rock texture on your filler to blend the edges between the rocks where the gaps are filled. The important thing is that you do fill the undersides and you get a... It, it doesn't have any obvious overhangs, if you know, underhangs, if you know what I mean. Don't worry about the texture where you join them up. We're gonna be covering that area with water effects anyway, and foam effects and spray effects. Pretty simple, eh? Well, it is. But what you get is you get these, which are beautiful. I don't wanna to touch it too much because the filler's still wet, but you can see how I've used the filler to combine them and make them into one rock, okay? And we're gonna put this over to one side now because we need it to dry much like the milliput. So that's another technique for using the rocks. Now, one final one I wanna do is I have this piece, which is a nice long piece. And I've got some five mil foam. Now five mil foam would technically work over to about a five foot high sandbar. So we're gonna to need to sand it down. But before we can sand it down, what we need to do is get a rough idea of the actual sizes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along, I'm gonna cut this out with a blade, glue it down. And when I glue it down, I'm probably gonna use not PVA, but no more nails. I don't wanna use hot glue on foam, especially thin foam, it'll melt it. So I'm gonna use no more nails, but I'm just gonna use a couple of blobs. I do not wanna spread no more nails or any other type of glue all the way along this. It'll warp, okay? So just a couple of little blobs, yeah, to fix it down. Now, the important thing is we're gonna cut this out and we're gonna sand it down. So. Should we get cracked on? Now, when you cut your foam, make sure there's at least five to eight mil of base around it, because this is the space that you're gonna to need to blend it in. Then get some heavy duty sandpaper and start sanding down the edges. Pay particular attention to where the edges meet the base and also make sure that you don't leave it flat on top and you do sand all over it to get a more natural sandbar looking effect. When it comes to gluing it down, you can use all sorts of adhesive, but the key point is to use them in spots to reduce the chance of warping. 
Once the foam's dried and in place, it's time to come in with our filler. First, put the bulk of the filler around the edges to start filling in that little step between the foam and the base. Once the filler's spread out nice all around your edges, come in with a little bit of water and we'll just watch, just smooth it over. Try and avoid any sort of ridge lines or transition lines and make a nice smooth uh, slope from the top of the sandbar onto the base. So all our pieces are dry and if you come down you can see because we've used materials that don't shrink when they dry or cure we've got perfectly flat scatter pieces. Now we've got our milliput ones here, we've got our filler and foam one here, we've got our rock on here and then I did this quick sort of mix of foam and rock just to do something a little bit more interesting. Now we're at a situation where it's time to start painting them up but I want to put a hold on that for one special technique. The water effects that we're going to be doing, most of them are going to be applied after we paint. But there's one technique that I want to show you that's done more at the construction stage before the painting. And that's actually sculpting the waves out of a filler or a stucco. So what do I mean? Right, here I have my bog standard dial filler from B&Q, my favorite sort of filler. And then in this little tub, I have Artex. It's a ceiling stucco. It's in a little tub because it comes in a massive tub and it's just too unwieldy to get out on the desk and it dries out a lot as you're working. So it's better to keep the stuff in a little tub. Yeah, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread these out over these two pieces. I'm gonna use these because you're gonna see them best on these. And then I'm gonna sculpt the whales. The, the whales? There's no whales on this. <laughs> sculpt the waves, okay? Uh, there's two different, Artex and Filler differs, okay? They're, they're like chalk and cheese. They're both uh, essentially a type of stucco, uh, a plaster fix mix, if you know what I mean. I, I'm being very broad there, stucco is a lot more complicated, but let's just stick with that for the time being. I'm gonna get hammered in the comments over that. Right, the thing about Filler is, Filler is really good at volume, bulk but holding sharp detail, it tends to sort of sag down and smooth out. So it's not great at holding sharp detail. Artex, on the other hand, it's really good at holding sharp detail, but it's rubbish at bulking. Okay, so we're gonna get sharper waves from the Artex, but I'm showing you how to do it with the filler because I don't want you to think that you've got to go out and get Artex to do this. We've used filler on these pieces already. I want to show you that you can use filler as well to do the waves. So with all that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically spread both of these out using a little spatula, okay? And then I'm going to use the spatula basically to tease up the waves. So let's get stuck in. Starting with the filler, lay it down and smooth it out with a wet finger to get a nice smooth transition and to lay it down. Once it's actually down, you need to leave it a little while because while the, the filler's wet, it won't hold the detail. So you need it to start to dry out and become a little bit tacky before you can come in with your wooden spatula and start shaping your waves by making little longitudinal strokes and stroking the filler slightly towards the actual edge of the beach. And this is what will create your soft waves. In the case of Artex, Artex doesn't need the water to smooth it out. It'll lay out quite smooth. You still need a little bit of water to, to do the transition lines between the Artex C and the Milliput sort of sandbar, but that's all. It also takes the details a lot crisper and a lot quicker. So Artex does produce far better results in this technique, but you can do it with filler guys. Now these techniques can be tricky, but remember while they're still wet, you can wipe them off, you can start again, you can put more on, you can still work them. It's only once they're set that they're actually finished. So. Don't stress if it's not going the way you want, keep playing with it till you get the style you want and then expand it to your range of scatter pieces. So our filler and Artex waves have all dried now and if you come up to the close cam, 
there you go as you can see that is the filler one yeah that's the filler one and struggling with the light but hopefully you can just about see the wave patterns on there they'll look a lot better once we get some paint on them of course and very quickly there is the this is the artex one yeah much more defined waves as i said you can do it with filler artex does have more artex slash wall stucco ceiling stucco does have more defined ridges for waves and stuff like that so if you can get that it's a bonus now as you can see yeah my rocks have dried i've also done a little what you call it sort of combination one of a bit of a scree and a sandbar and then there's my sandbar and they're all lying flat and we're at the stage where we are painting now when it comes to painting the rocks i'm going to just skip through with my normal sort of gray dry brushing i'll very quickly talk you through but i want to have a quick chat about sand okay now first off from my research it appears that Sand is not only sandy colour, it's pretty much every colour under the sun. There's red beaches, green beaches, purple beaches, black beaches. I used to actually live in North Wales and on Anglesey we have black rot sands where the sand is all black. Okay, so sand doesn't have to be what you normally assume sand is. There are regional variations, but let's go with the most common. And if we go to our colours, yeah, what you're probably used to is these sort of colours. Yeah, and really some really nice yellows there, aren't they? Yeah, look at those. Yeah, lovely sandy colours. No, these are useless for sand. Sand isn't yellow as such. It's brown, okay? It's a very warm brown, and depending on how dry it is, it goes from sort of a warm chocolatey brown to a, a beigey colour, and then all the way over to a cream. So, we're going to be using these colours, okay, which are my light creams and browns. And if I bring them up on close cam very quickly, the darkest is a chocolate colour, okay, we might need to lighten that just a touch. Yeah, after that, we've got this nice uh, chocolate dream. There's a lot of chocolate going around in the paint. I don't know what it is with chocolate and paint. I know what it is. Let's be honest. Yeah, most men don't give a damn what paint we throw on the walls, as long as it's painted and it looks clean. Ladies, ladies have more preference towards the aesthetics of their home. Yeah, I'd also say ladies are far more interested in chocolate than men are. And so that's probably why the labelling... If anyone works in the paint industry, I'd like to know why there's so many chocolates and rouges and all this sort of stuff in paint names. Curious. But anyway, moving on, we have a soft cream yeah and a warm beige okay now these are our paint colors and they will give us more realistic colors than if we use the yellows yes you will see yellows used on terrain and stuff like that but let's be honest it looks a bit vibrant it doesn't look quite right and that's because actually beach colors they're warm browns so what we're going to do is we're going to paint up the sand on our pieces okay and i'm going to start off and we're probably going to go in with, I don't think I'll go in too dark yet. I'll go in with a, what should I, a beige, and then we'll go in and we'll lighten it up. I'm also going to do the rocks as well, get the base colour grey on those rocks. So we'll do this in a bit of a time lapse and I'll talk you through it as we do. Cracking on time. We start off with a base coat of our mid-brown and add a touch of our dark brown in just to make it a little bit richer. Once we've got a smooth covering of our base coat, then it's time to start stepping it up, okay? And what we start to do is mix more of our core uh, brown cream in and then our lighter beige. At each stage, you, we're narrowing it down where we're actually putting the paint to more and more of the center raised bits of the sandbars. And I'm using my finger to smudge the lines in between and get a nice transition. The rocks are going to be done pretty simply with just a simple base coat of uh, dark grey and then we're going to step it up with a few lighter shades and dry brushing. We'll come back and add a few washes and a few touches when they're dry. And with those few simple steps we've got some awesome looking beaches. So let me show you. Yeah, always better when I hold them like that. 
Yeah, as you can see, you can see where I've gone in with my creams and then I've just basically lined it up. So base coat of that one, yeah, with a touch of that one, yeah, and then lightened it up to that one until I was applying pretty much a, a simple strap, uh, a simple line across the raised areas and smudge it in purely of my light beige. I didn't even get to my lightest colour, which is a bit, it's a bit, really sunny beach. <laughs> I'm British, I'm not used to seeing sand like that to be perfectly honest. <laughs> this is about as good as it gets but as you can see awesome sun colours there. Now same on that one, we've gone over the waves a little bit, we'll fix that in a second. This one you can just see a little of the, what you call it, of the actual milliput there. I was a bit too quick and I didn't let the base coat dry and then with me smudging I lifted it up. We'll touch it up in a minute once it's all dry and I can go back onto it. Yeah, and then finally, with our composite one, there we are. Yeah, and you'll notice I've kept the light colours away from the actual rocks. The rocks will gather water around them, so it'll be a bit darker near the base of those. Plus, I know I've got to do some washes and stuff on, so we might have a bit of tinkering on that. Now, with all the, the sand colours done, it's time to get onto the sea. And I've done a lot of videos on sea colours and stuff like that, and they're in the water playlist, so I'm going to keep my basic ocean colour quite simple for this one. I'm going to use a regal blue, okay, but I've mixed a tiny touch of grey into it to get that, okay, and that's a, a, a far more, it's a desaturated blue and it's more realistic. So my next job is all I need to do is go around all of these and just paint the blue onto them, okay, so I'm going to crack on with that, I'm not even going to time lapse it, I'll see you in a second. So my ocean colours are down, and if you take a look, let's have a look at this one first. Okay, now you can see that's quite light around the edges. That's because I did the smudging thing with my finger with the first coat, and then very quickly just went over the edges and smudged those in as well. And I've got quite a nice transition there. There are a couple of mistakes, don't worry, we'll hide those with the waves. Now moving on. Yeah, you can see we've done those pieces as well, and we've also done the ones with our textured waves. Okay, they've come up a lot more solid because I wanted a solid coat on them. And in the cases of our rocks, all I did was I gave our rocks a quick wash with a burnt umber, a very dark brown, just really water down, give it a quick wash over, and then I added a little bit of black to the burnt umber, thinned it down, and just did the sort of tidal sort of strike. You know that dark strip you get at the base of coastlines. Think about it, I should have added a little bit more green in there because it's a bit algae-ish if you know what I mean, but it's okay for this time. Next time when you do it, throw a bit of dark green in there or just make it look a little bit more realistic. And on this one, done pretty much the same there. Uh, not 100% on the transition there, but it'll do. I'll blend it in with a bit of paint maybe later. Let's get the waves on anyway. Right, onto the waves. Now for the waves, for these two pieces, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue, I'm going to add in a little bit of white and just dry brush it up, highlighting it, yeah, just because these are structural painted waves. Yeah, so that's the job on those. Now, on these three pieces, we're going to do something a little bit different, okay? And I want to show you a few different simple techniques for doing water effects, okay? And I'm not talking about the resin stuff and all that sort of stuff, just really simple stuff. So, first off, you can get this stuff, which is water effects paste, okay? Uh, it's from Vallejo. It is essentially a heavy acrylic texture gel with a, a blue dye in it. Uh, on top of that, we have glossy Mod Podge, okay? And finally, <laughs> I'm gonna get on the screen. Yeah, clear silicone, bathroom sealant. Now in the case of all those three, all I'm gonna do is layer a simple layer down and stipple it. Now there is one final other thing, little touch I want to throw onto these, which is dead simple. Yeah, it's this stuff. Okay, now this stuff is polyfiber. If I pull a bit out, bring it up to the close cam, yeah, you can see it on there. Now the plan is to pull out little wisps of this and embed it into the various mixtures just as they hit the rocks, just to create that spray effect. I've got to put it in while it's wet because I don't really want to be gluing it on top of my water effect. So it'll be a little fiddly, but it'll be doable. 
Right, with that in mind, let me get cracked on. Painting up the Artex and filler pieces was just a simple matter of adding little bits of white into my base colour and then just slowly dry brushing over the waves, increasing the white as I went to sort of increase the sort of lightness of the waves as you reach the top with a final touch of just white across the very top. In the case of the Mod Podge, this was just simply stippled around the water areas, going up onto the beach a little and repeatedly gone over a couple of times just to get a decent layer of Mod Podge. An extra amount was sort of applied just where I wanted to put the polyfiber to get the spray effect against the rocks. With the paste, all I did was smooth a, a thin layer all around over the water area. Then I came in with my spatula and very slowly, repeatedly stippled it to create the wave effects. This was done multiple times to sort of increase the number of waves with it being a small scale piece. Finally, the transition lines between the blue and the yellow were hidden by mixing a little bit of cr clear acrylic paste and a little bit of white paint. Yeah, and then they were stippled on directly on the transition lines to hide where the blue met the yellow. Have you ever had one of those days? Yeah, I've had one of those days. <laughs> Come on down, let me show you what I've done. Right, okay, a uh, couple of problems. Now, uh, that does not look like I wanted it to end up looking, to be perfectly honest. So what was the problem, Bosicle? Well, quite simply, I came along and I went to get my silicon sealer and there you go, it's fully cured, completely, in the tube. <sighs> so I couldn't use that. So I grabbed some white. Okay, and what I should have done is I should have come in and just lightly stippled it to get some froth and some wave effects. Like an idiot, I laid it on with a spatula with the intention of stippling over it. And so, yeah, what I ended up with was that. Now you can see a bit of the blue underneath and if I had gone in and stippled it, this would have probably looked really good. Yeah, but with me layering over it, ah, it happens, guys. Now, that's not the only little mistake I made. <laughs> I've got to stop beating myself up about these things happen. Stop beating yourself up, boss. Yeah, it's about the techniques. Right, let me show you how I botched up this one. All right, now, this is our long, longitudinal piece. And you can see that the, what you call it, that the acrylic paste has gone down. Still got a little curing to do. It will go a little bit darker than that. And I've dry brushed over it. But you can see that the white here is a bit excessive. Yeah, I went in a little bit too heavy. What I should have done, yeah, is mixed in a little bit of the blue uh, paste, yeah, that stuff, with my translucent paste, and done a bit of a transition line, like I did with my D-Day board. Here you are, here are a couple of shots of those. Do you see what I mean about the transition? Yeah, whereas this one, I just came in a little bit too heavy. Okay, and I think it's okay. You know, it looks okay and it's gameable and it's flat and everything like that, but you know, I beat myself up over these things. I tried to, you know what I mean? Now, let me show you what it should look like when you do the white stippling. Now, this is our Mod Podge one. And if I bring this up, look at that. Yeah, now this is where I've gone in with the stippling a lot less and I added a lot more of the translucent gel on this one so it looks really nice. Okay, we've got the rocks, we've got the foam, yeah, and perfectly fat. And the Mod Podge does give it a nice little sort of wavy effect as you can see, yeah, without creating too many lips. Mod Podge would be a good way of making boards for, for games where you've got to place models on that stay flat. It does have enough of a texture that you could the light reflects off it like an ocean sort of effect. Yeah, but the, the actual raises 
they're, they're very small and they're uniform across it, so models sit on it really well. So, yeah, Mod Podge, I do highly recommend, <laughs> yeah? Just don't be mel with the white stuff, okay? And then finally, two pieces that come out really nice. Yeah, we've got our Artex and our filler. Now, the Artex one over here, done exactly the same as the filler one painting-wise. I've just given it a coat of gloss varnish. Yeah, just a quick single coat, and it's come out really nice, whereas this one's a little bit matte. The important thing to notice is you can see on, let me get this right, on this one, which is the Artex one, yeah, you can see that the waves are far more defined, yeah? Whereas the filler one's a little bit more messy. Artex is the better way to go, but like I said, I wanted to show you how to do with filler. So there we have it. That's how I've messed up a little bit. Have you noticed it always happens at the end of a project? Not you know, like at the start when you can fix it and that sort of stuff. No, very last bit. Thank you. I could probably mess around with these and pull them back together, but to be perfectly honest, I think I've given you enough information in this video for what I set out. My little, just have a little practice and get, get your, your gradients right before you do my, on your individual pieces. I think with me, I'm just doing too many techniques across too much stuff and my head's getting jumbled. Do you know what I mean? Now, that's the problem with these core skill ones. Anyway, yeah, the important thing is I've given you some techniques for the ocean effects that you can definitely use, the polyfiber, yeah, the acrylic paste works, the Mod Podge works. Yeah, I messed up on the watch lot and the silicon. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I should have just gone out and bought a new tub. Yeah, but the shop's miles away and I wanted to get cracked on. Anyway, yeah, the filler ones, really like those. They've come out really now, filler and Artex ones. And I really do like the Mod Podge one. Yeah, I think I might make a few more of those. I'll clean this off and redo them. I can do stuff like that. Anyway, guys, the important thing about this is, let's go over a couple of key things. Right, when you're doing small scale scatter for naval stuff, yeah, you wanna keep your bases really thin. One mil plastic card is the way to go. That's what I recommend. After that, to avoid warping, what you've gotta do is switch your materials to non-shrinking materials. So, milliput, foam, filler, Artex. On top of that, if you've got to glue anything down, Hot glue doesn't cause warping, and also thick uh, adhesive, uh, grip adhesives like No More Nails applied in spots, yeah, they don't cause warping. Avoid PVA, yeah, at all costs. When it comes to your colours, remember, sands are not yellow, yeah. They're not that colour, they are creams and browns. And if you take a quick look, even though I messed up the foam, yeah, the beaches, they do look lovely. They look better than my D-Day board, to be truthful. I'm getting there with my coastal stuff. For those of you who've been following along will know that uh, this year has been a lot about me improving my water techniques and resins and stuff like that. I'm still doing it, yeah. Maybe by the end of the year, we'll get it all nailed down. But in the meantime, that's pretty much what I've got to share for you, yeah. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions, get them down below in, in, the, in the comments. Uh, if you want to take the mick out of me for making messing it up at the end, feel free. Yeah, it's what I'm here for, guys. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. Yeah, and as always, guys, yeah, like it, share it. And if you do appreciate me sharing what I know and showing how I make my mistakes, then remember, yeah, this channel is community supported. And I do need your support. And it's only a dollar. That's all I ask. Just one dollar once a month. Yeah, but all of you great guys chipping in together help keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, and me in here sharing what I know and showing where I screw up. So if you really do like it, guys, yeah, please consider supporting it. Yeah, links are going up on the screen now. And in the meantime, yeah, I'm coming back with some more small scale stuff. We're doing some coastal stuff. And I'll be doing filler waves on that or Artex waves. <laughs> right, I'll see you soon, guys. All the best, yeah? ta -da.